This mini lecture talks about the product of primes, um, and it's, a, it's going to rely on information that we have learned in two of our previous mini lectures, um, the inverted short division and the divisibility rules. Um, so a quick review of these terms at the top. Um, to be a product means the answer that you get to a multiplication problem, and to be prime means that the only numbers that you are divisible by are one and yourself. So if we're creating a product of primes, what we're doing is taking our original numbers, in this case 624, 513, and 875, and breaking them down until they are just a string of prime numbers that when multiplied back together would get us back to our original number. So the first part of these problems are already entered for you on your note packet. Um, we're going to be using the divisibility rules that we've learned for the digits 2, 3, 5, and 7 to divide these larger numbers by those numbers until it's not possible to do so anymore. So looking at the first one, because 624 is an even number, it will divide by 2. So that's where we'll start. 2 fits into 6 three times with a zero remainder. And then 2 fits into 2 once, also with a zero remainder, and fits into 4 two times. This leaves us with 312. Now you'll notice, since we did our division upside down, our answer is now at the bottom instead of on top, making it easy to write yet another division symbol and divide again. So I think back to my rules again, noticing that 312 ends in a 2, it's an even number. So that means I can divide by 2 again. 2 fits into 3 one time with 1 remaining. 2 fits into 11 5 times with 1 remaining. And 2 fits into 12 6 times. Now with 156 still being an even number, I know that 2 will once again fit in evenly into my dividend. So I'm going to put a 2 on the outside again. 2 does not fit into 1, but it fits into 15 7 times with 1 remaining, and into 16 8 times. 78 as an even number will again be divided by 2, and 2 fits into 7 three times, with one left over, and into 18, nine times. Now I finally have a quotient that does not end in an even number. So I need to look up here at my primes and decide if the next smallest prime, 3, will fit into 39. Recall that the rule for 3 says if you add the digits and they add up to a multiple of 3, then the number that you're trying to divide will also divide by 3. So since 3 plus 9 equals 12, 39 is divisible by 3. So 3 fits into 3 one time with no remainder, and into 9 three times. I'm now left with a quotient of 13, and if you look back two lectures, or maybe it was three, uh, to the prime number lectures, you'll notice that 13 is a prime number, meaning that none of our other primes are going to fit evenly into it, uh, since the only number that 13 is divisible by is 1 and itself. That makes our product of primes for this number, 624, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times 3, times 13. Again, getting those answers from this outside column of division. So if I multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 13 back together, it would leave me with a product of 624. Let's try that again with 513. I already know that 2 is not going to fit into 513 since it ends in an odd number. So I check the rule for 3's and discover that 5 plus 1 plus 3 is 9. So 
I know that 3 is going to fit evenly into 513. Dividing 3 into 5 first, it fits one time with 2 remaining. And then 3 fits into 21 7 times without remainder. And 3 fits into 3 once. I'm going to continue to try to divide by 3 until it's not possible before trying a larger prime. So looking at the number 171, I again add the digits. 1 plus 7 plus 1 also equals 9. And since 9 is a multiple of 3, 171 is also a multiple of 3. 3 will fit into 17 5 times with 2 remaining. And 3 will fit into 21 7 times. Adding my digits again, 5 plus 7 is 12, tells me that 57 is also a multiple of 3, with 3 fitting into 5 once and into 27 9 times. Looking back at my list of prime numbers from the previous lectures, I discovered that 19 is a prime number, meaning that its only factors are the digits 1 and 19. So I am finished with this problem as well. And my product of primes, 513, is going to be equal to 3 times 3 times 3 times 19. One final example gives us 5 divide, or gives us the large number 875. Now I can't divide this number by 2 because it's an odd number. And adding the digits, 8 plus 7 plus 5, gives me a sum of 20. And since 20 is not a multiple of 3, I can't divide by 3 either. That's why I've started with 5. 5 will fit into 8 one time with 3 remaining. And 5 fits into 37 7 times with 2 remaining. 5 into 25 will fit 5 times. Since my quotient ends in a 5, I know that, the, that 5 will once again fit into 175. Going into 17 3 times with 2 remaining, and into 25 5 times. Again faced with a quotient that ends in a 5, I will divide by 5 one final time, getting a final quotient of 7. 7, being a number on our list of primes, tells me that I am done and that the number 875, when written as a product of primes, is 5 times 5 times 5 times 7. One final note on the notation for these numbers. Any time that you have a factor that repeats, you can also use exponential notation to show that number. So in our first example, 624, we had four twos. That can be written as 2 to the 4th power, because 2 to the 4th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the 2 portion of this answer can be written as 2 to the 4th, since there is only 1 each of the 3 and the 13, they are just added on as additional factors. Writing five, the product of primes of 513 in exponential notation gives us 3 cubed times 19, or 3 to the third power times 19. And 875, written in exponential notation, would be 5 to the third times 7. Either of these notations is acceptable as final answers on tests and quizzes. Um, I bring up the exponential notation specifically because your textbook uses that as the answer form uh, for many of these product of prime problems. And that's the end of your product of primes.